Sydney-based company Biotron has developed a drug capable of treating HIV and hepatitis C. Recent data showing the drug capable of wiping out hidden reservoirs of HIV virus, which has been the holy grail of HIV research globally. Well, CEO Dr Michelle Miller joins us now from our Sydney CBD studio. Dr Miller, thanks very much for your time this evening. Just to start with, tell us a little bit about the company. OK, so Biotron is um, an ASX-listed company that we're developing new classes of small molecule drugs to treat viral diseases. In particular, our uh, main focus is on HIV and hepatitis C. And my understanding is the drug BIT-225. That's right. Um, an exciting name. Um, the reason it's called that is because it was the 225th drug that we made. Right. And with our screening, that was the one that came out to be our lead compound. Does this have the potential then to be the most important out of the 225 drugs that you've created? Well, that's right. This is the one that we identified as having the potential um, to have really good activity in the clinic against these viruses. I mean, you make a lot of compounds, but not all of them are suitable to be put into humans. But 225 is quite a long way down the track. Like we've done, I think we're up to our seventh or eighth clinical trial now. So we have very good, very solid clinical data from this. This isn't, you know, back at the university research stage, we're a long way down the track towards um, a commercial product. Just on that note then, I mean, how far away, what sort of time frame are you working on um, to where it's actually available? I guess from where we are at the moment, we have um, some very solid data behind us that we've identified these compounds, these drug, this drug works in the clinic against these viruses. The next step that we need to do is to show that it's safe for longer dosing. To date our trials have been done with 28 days of dosing. We're now doing trials with three months of dosing. But I guess that if things go well, um, we would expect that the drug could potentially be on the market within a time frame of three to five years. And what, is this a cure or, I mean, what, what exactly are you working towards? What is it potentially? Okay. So HIV is a really interesting virus. You know, the existing antiretroviral drugs work really well. They eliminate the virus within the T cells. Um, they keep the, keep the patient healthy. They keep the T cell counts high. The virus at really low levels in the blood or undetectable in the blood. But the problem is the virus is still there. It still exists within these long-lived reservoirs, which is set up very early on in infection. But the existing drugs don't actually have any activity against these reservoirs. So it used to be thought, well, who cares? If you can keep the patient healthy, it doesn't matter that there are these long-lived reservoirs still existing in the patients. The problem is what we're now finding is that, first of all, you can get resistance coming out of these reservoirs, but it's also creating an ongoing burden within these patients in particular in reservoirs within the brain. AIDS-related dementia occurs in a really large percentage of HIV-positive patients. What they're now finding is some patients long-term being on antiretroviral drugs, keeping the virus at really low levels but not eliminating these reservoirs, the virus in the brain is causing this dementia and it's stopped, it's, the patients are starting to forget to take their medications mm. and that's starting to become a problem. So now they've recognised now what we need to do is let's just get rid of this virus all over and let's come up with a cure or an, a, prefer to use an eradication strategy to eliminate the virus that's there. And is this a competitive space or are you alone in, in this sort of research? At the moment it's, a very, it's very competitive on the research side at the university level. Um, it's only been, we've been I guess ahead of the curve with this. We recognised this was a problem 10 years ago so we've been working on this for quite some time. So in terms of what's in the clinic in the terms of the reservoirs that we're going after, we're really um, out there leading the way, which is a nice position to be in. Indeed. So, so first mover advantage in terms of, of, of the markets? Yeah, I think that's right. It's always good to be first. Uh, in, in terms of getting it to market, I mean, is there the belief, the hope of some sort of government subsidy so it's a little bit more cost effective? Look, that's always, um, that's always a tricky question and it's always an issue with um, the pharmaceutical companies on mm. one hand and the insurers on the other because especially within the US market, the insurers have a very strong say over, over that and the pricing issues. I guess for us, our model is we don't expect to take this through to the market on our own. We're, our aim and our model 
is to license this or partner with one of the major pharmaceutical companies so they can take it through the really large and very expensive phase three studies which will be coming up soon and then through onto the market. Um, they have the right um, skills, right money in particular and deep <laughs> pockets to be able to do that. All right, Dr Miller, really appreciate you joining us this evening. Thanks very much. Thank you.